I literally heard Jim Cramer on CNBC yesterday saying Elon Musk needs all of these GPUs and these chips and so that with the data, they can train the chips. And I'm saying like, you idiot, you're not training any <laughs> chips. Like, what are you talking about? Just the lack of knowledge is insane. Who's calling a, uh, NVIDIA an AI company? Everybody. But don't you think there's an argument to be made that NVIDIA is the enabler for this AI thing that we're going through? Like without NVIDIA, yeah, we don't have this do. thing, right? So doesn't that by default make them an AI company? No, I think people are being loose and liberal with their their words. If I make motors for a car, am I a car company? It's, it's interesting you say that because every single legacy automaker out there, that's literally the only thing that they actually make and they outsource everything else and they're called car companies, but they're really they're, just engine companies. Well, they're a car design company, they're a car assembly company, sure. You know, and, and I, I can, you know, if there's anyone who's going to be a smart ass in the comments, they're going to say, oh, then Tesla's just a car company. Tesla isn't just a car company. They are a car company, but they're not just a car company. And the reason is because they actually have an AI product, AI, AI competency, AI team, developers, like they actually have all of that. Do you consider Microsoft an AI company? I don't. I consider them having a partnership with OpenAI. I see I see the point you're making actually. It, it does, you're kind of saying that calling Nvidia an AI company diminishes AI companies because AI companies are the ones that are going to craft the software solutions that are powered by the hardware that will create that recurring revenue and that scaling effect of like having this in millions and millions and millions of units that are going to be able to do repetitive work or work that's going to displace or enhance a lot of the economy versus the underpinning that's going to power that. It's like it's two different things is basically what you're saying. I don't see a cloud provider as an AI company just because they host the GPUs and they rent that out, right? Um, Microsoft, I would say, like literally, what do they, what do they offer besides Copilot? That again, we're circumnavigating back to OpenAI. Like, what exactly are they offering? You know, I mean, you, you can look at uh, Amazon, and while everyone thinks Amazon's the laggard, and obviously I'm biased, I get all that. But Amazon's been doing what, you know, not LLMs, right? But they've been doing AI forever, right? With everything you on Amazon.com, right? Alexa, yeah, it's not the best, but yeah, that's AI, that's machine learning. Like that's how they get to Alexa. All the things they do in internally, they literally build their own chips, right? So, and they have a actual offering uh, called Q, right? So they have their own things. Whereas someone like Microsoft is just white labeling open AI. So is by your definition, Apple an AI company? Not right now. No, they have Siri. Siri is for all I can, based on what I can tell is not using machine learning or any type of, uh, artificial intelligence. <laughs> and I only say that because they haven't been able to iterate on it <laughs> because it's obvious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. C could they be? I would say yes. But again, the fact that I see them going out and trying to make all these partnerships with other people instead of doing things so in house. So weird. Well, it's it's me too. It's a me too, not a movement, but this is when companies die is when they become me too companies. It's like, oh yeah, I'm doing that too. Here's what I'm doing. They're, they just start trying to do partnerships everywhere, right? Look at GM in China. This is where things die is when companies aren't doing things themselves because the whether it's the innovator's dilemma, whatever it is. Tesla is the only company that I could tell you right now that has actual AI talent and expertise internally that we know of that actually is putting their money where their mouth is from a hardware perspective, because without the hardware, you can't actually do any AI work. And to just show you how like backwards uh, everybody is. I literally heard Jim Cramer on CNBC yesterday saying Elon Musk needs all of these GPUs and these chips and so that with the data, they can train the chips. And I'm saying like, you idiot, you're not training any <laughs> chips. Like, what are you talking about? Just the lack of knowledge is insane. My point is Tesla has the talent. They have the hardware. Why does the hardware matter? Because that's when you can actually start doing AI, ML, Gen AI, whatever you want to call it. And then Tesla's the only company that actually has something out there that they're actually selling 
making real profit on that's actually doing something that that can replace a human. Tell me another actual AI thing that's not taking away tasks or replacing or helping in productivity, but actually replacing a human. You, you make excellent points. I think we both of us agree with a lot of what you just said. So the, the, the thing that's interesting about NVIDIA is like, I, I really think that their the ability to create, to make 76% gross profit on a hardware product is insane. It is insane. It's in, like that doesn't make any sense. 76% gross profit, okay, uh, percentage. So it's like, so that already says that the amount of demand for this thing is insane. Is it's completely it, that gross profit percentage is a is a direct uh, reflection of very limited supply and extremely high demand. But there is a but there is a lot of money going that's being tossed into the AI thing that Nvidia essentially has a, a like a quasi monopoly on the hardware. Let's say, kind of right. So and that's why they ha they're getting the valuation that they're getting. But I think that in itself deserves a giant amount of props. And I'm not saying you're not doing this, Nico, by the way, but like that in itself is such an incredible, like a brilliant positioning of the company for the last five years or however it's been to try to get it to this point and having the foresight that this is where we're going. Right. But it's like on the opposite end, sort of the point that you made, which is which I agree with 100 percent, we haven't yet seen who is going to make money on those tens and hundreds of billions of dollars that they're investing to start getting an ROI on that investment, right? So Nvidia is like is like hoovering up everyone's uh eye their investments, but there's the RO hasn't shown up yet. And the only company that that I've identified sounds like you've identified Nico, and there's other companies out there that I know are are working on this actively, but the only one that appears to have a, le a legitimate business model that will have an ROI on the and that AI investment is Tesla because they have invested for the last seven years or so their entire fleet to be able to create to, to generate an ROI based on that investment by uploading a software update and creating the Optimus robot. Right. But, no. but we need to see that in the PL for that to, to, to prove out. But I, I also want to be I want to be intellectually honest here or transparent i guess or i don't know what the right word is but open ai is making money right you know there's a company called glean out there there's uh, whatever all these companies that essentially are doing the same thing sorry are we sure open ai is making money i mean they're making revenue but are we sure they're making money okay like, are they profitable Fair. but good good they're making good. revenue they're charging 20 dollars a month per user whatever the problem with that is that $20 a month, in my opinion, is the highest it's ever going to be. And it's just going to go down because it's all getting democratized, right? They're all training on the same data set to sell the same. Pro how many how many companies are in the same space right now with LLMs? So many, so many. They're all trying to create the foundation model. And here comes Meta saying, yeah, all right, we'll give it out for free. But they're doing the classic Facebook Right, like if, if you're not paying for it, then you are the, you know, you're, you're the one that they're mining. But so eventually, it's going to get to a point where why would I ever pay twenty dollars a month when I can just go here for free? Well, and Microsoft is even giving out, you know, basically open AI, open AI for free through Bing and Copilot. Like a lot of these things are are essentially free. Um, I would definitely classify Facebook as an AI company right now because they're using a lot. I mean, basically all the social media companies are and have been for a long time just because they use machine learning in all of their recommendation engines. And, you know, they're getting more and more sophisticated at that over time and trying to figure out how to actually bring generative AI products um, into all of their suite. Yeah, of, of actual customer offerings. I mean, you're you're distinguishing picks and shovels from actual mining or uh, panning for gold, whatever, whatever form of trying to extract minerals that you're looking at. And I I think that's a good point. There are so many interesting efforts right now, but it is hard to say which ones are going to to play out. I mean, that's that's definitely why we're focused on Tesla between, especially between the cars 
which have an inference computer in them already and the Optimus robot platform that they're building, which will have the same inference capability on board from day one that can become much smarter over time as they squeeze more and more intelligent, artificial intelligent software into it. Pretend all this AI stuff never happened. But let's say there's the same demand for NVIDIA because Xbox and PlayStation are just kicking ass and they're taking off and all this demand uh, is warranted because everyone's trying to build you know, the next gaming console or whatever. Does that make NVIDIA a gaming company? Or are they still a GPU chip maker designer? I, I guess again, I think I think the the takeaway from your comment though, it, it like the implication that you're saying is that you're just basically saying we're just getting started, but like it's it's in in a way. This is a, in, in fact, I don't even want to take credit for this because it was brought to my attention through the All In podcast, where David Sachs calls out the way any of these revolution revolutions work is it always starts where. The hardware companies make all the money and then the companies that make more money than that are the software companies and then the companies that make the most money are the ones who are actually doing something that creates like a, a recurring revenue or something that actually you know provides that like next level of value but it always starts the hardware company and that's where we are right now and we're just getting started at yeah the, the hardware one is we have a proof of concept meaning that there is a legitimate business case being made for the hardware because there's a company out there that's making the best chip and almost everybody's buying it and they're making a gigantic amount of profit on it a gigantic amount of profit on it so now what's it, the, the tesla thing is interesting because it's like tesla's doing all three too you know i mean dojo we're still unsure about like how how much you're actually using, how realistic it is to be used long term, like that that discussion is still going on. It's pretty definitive right now that it's not in a good place compared to NVIDIA, at least for. So, I mean, the what we have today is mostly the NVIDIA cluster that was turned on. And then they're talking about getting the rest of it from Oracle, which is also going to be, you know, NVIDIA based. It's definitely not going to be Dojo. We know that for sure. Um, so other than spending 500 million to expand a Dojo cluster in Buffalo, New York, which is probably just to beef up their auto labeling pipeline, then we don't have a clear line of sight to Tesla using any more Dojo than that before TSMC said that they're going to update their process in 2027 to do the you know integrated chip on or system on chip on wafer thing that um, will allow them to put high bandwidth memory directly on chips on top of a wafer. Uh, that they said would make Dojo potentially 40 times more powerful than it is today. But at the rate that the NVIDIA chips are progressing 40 times faster than today still is probably going to be behind in 2027. I sort of agree with you on that. I think the whole Oracle and Dell thing likely has nothing to do with NVIDIA. I think the Oracle and Dell, unless you know something I don't, um, which is possible. I think the Oracle and Dell partnership is them trying to create their own internal private cloud so that they can internally host profiles for robo taxis and you know building out all that infrastructure because you would never use h100s for for that crap that's just basic server cpu maybe I, I don't know why you would use gpus for it but this basic infrastructure and i think that's what's happening there i, I think they're going to start building this house so they don't have to host it in any uh cloud provider but blackwell is interesting because they couldn't actually do what they wanted to with blackwell it's actually to and i haven't studied this in like a minute so forgive me for using the wrong words but and maybe give the audience a little bit of knowledge into what blackwell is as you're going through it th that's that's the the new chip that nvidia came out with after the h200 but it's essentially bringing two let's just call it chips together but they weren't able to make one chip and so they have the same it's like like in cpus like normally you'll see like um like in, in computers, like, you know, dual Intel, whatever, where there's something called a NUMA boundary between them. And that's how it actually is able to schedule CPU cycles across both. But you normally want to schedule all jobs on one, uh, one of those CPUs. So you don't have to cross that NUMA boundary, but Blackwell, they couldn't figure out just yet how to design it so that you wouldn't have that, what I'm calling a NUMA boundary. It's not, but a same idea 
across it. So I, I guess all, all I'm saying is it, it does seem like the, it, it seems like, you know, they're starting to hit that kind of logarithmic. Hit a boundary. Yeah. yeah. It, and I, I could be wrong. It, maybe they just want to get something out to market because this other thing wasn't ready. Like I'm sure they have the next three generations in pipeline right now, you know? So, but I'm just saying like, it was just interesting to see that. And it's like, ah, interesting. 